stuff. Um, main thing to remember with this is the this pointer. When you're dealing with classes, objects, the this pointer is for visual. Microsoft Visual C++, it's passed in in the ECX register. Uh, the rest of the parameters are passed on the stack, like regular. Um, and when you're taking a look at classes and, and object, object instantiations, then it's basically a structure with some um, with some member functions that are going to get called either if they are if they are not marked as overriding. Here we'll take a look at the virtual function tables. If they're not marked as virtual, then it's just going to look like a regular function in Ida. It's going to be named sub underscore whatever. You're going to see it called just like a regular call sub underscore whatever. But before that, you're going to see ECX getting um, set up as the pointer to the whatever this object is. Uh, and the, this object will be, it'll look like a struct. Uh, the other thing that you'll see is if there is inheritance going on, or if the, um, in Visual Studio, if there are functions, class functions that are marked with the virtual keyword, you're going to get something called a uh, virtual function tables, uh, VF table. Um, and that will, see if we have it, yeah. That will look like this, where you, where you have a table of, hey, these are the actual functions that I'm going to use, and when you see a call to one of those functions, you'll see it referencing into that table and actually grabbing an offset in that table and then making a call to that offset. But the setup is going to be the same of you see the ECX getting moved, um, uh, getting set up as a pointer to the, the this, the current structure um, or class that you're working with, object that you're working with. Um, and the additional parameters are going to get pushed onto the stack. I can show you an example of what that looks like. You said this is like inherited? Um, yeah, so you're going to get the virtual function tables when there is inheritance going on, or um, it actually, when I was testing it out with the Visual Studio, um, the, the free one, the Express, um, it looked like even even if there wasn't inheritance actually going on, if there wasn't, or rather if you weren't overriding something when you were doing inheritance, if, as long as it was the function was marked as virtual, um, it was still, that virtual function table was still getting created and, and it was uh, being populated in there. I'll show you an example of what I mean. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention, object member access, it looks like, um, it looks like struct access, except you're going to see a uh, off of ECX, oops, because ECX is going to store your this. Um, actually, well, you'll see in a moment. Yeah. Um, constructors, destructors, just if you're uh, used to object-oriented programming, when uh, an object gets instantiated, there's a constructor that gets called um, when an object is destroyed. There's a destructor that gets called, and that just lets it uh, the object intelligently clean up its its own memory. So typically, within the a constructor, you'll see a call to new. Um, in a in a destructor, you'll see a uh, a call to free or delete. Okay, let's take a quick look at some code. Uh, we're done with the bomb lab, yay. Um, we're going to take a look at, which one? Class, class zero. So class zero is basically like struct introduction. 
where all of the members, why does it do that? Where all of the members are public and there's no no actual um, member functions. One of the things that, because I used a newer version of Visual Studio Express, um, Ida doesn't know where main, when main is. Um, it just brings you to the, to the actual entry point. Um, and this is one of those instances where having the latest version of Ida is beneficial because it would notice this code as being just, um, just kind of the default code put in by Visual Studio. So we actually have to go down to, and here's a little, here's a little tip. Go down to, you find W init environment, and then look at the next call, and that's our twin main. Oh, and it actually populated, so, because I named it twin main. So, take a look at this call. We got Bart, Marge, Homer, Lisa. So, like we saw with the struct um, introduction, um, the member access um, is going to, to be direct because there aren't any member functions in here. It looks very much like ESI plus 24, plus 24, plus 28, plus 20. This looks very much like you're, you're dealing with structures. And for all intents and purposes, when you have a class, that just has um, member variables that are all public and no no functions, then you're essentially dealing with a struct. Okay. If we take a look at class one. This one, let me double check my notes here. Class one has a constructor, but it's still public member access. This has a program. What was that? This has a program. Yeah, yeah, it just, I closed out IDA and I loaded. So there are uh, four class underscore number dot ex keys in the labs folder. Um, I'm going to try to go through this quickly, so, so don't bother following around, following along now, but um, if you want to take a look at them later to, to see, to, to really dig in and see the differences, I'm just trying to do the highlights right now, so you see. So this is class 1.exe, the previous one was class 0. And this one has a uh, constructor in it, um, but otherwise the members are public, and, uh, oh, got to go to the beginning again, the unit, there. And what we see is a lot of the same accessing by offset, like at the struct. The, uh, the constructor, you actually don't even see because uh, it was inlined in here. Um, the compiler just went, oh, well, it's just, um, it's, it's being called in this one place. I'm going to simplify it by inlining it so you're not even seeing a call to a separate function for the constructor. Um, so. So that's, that's that. Um, what you do see is this new here. And then a, uh, the stir copying going on. Okay, so class one. Class two, new file. Class two is uh, inheritance, where you actually have some functions. Okay, so there's a init, w init. There we go. So here we see. Yep. So here we have a um, a person. Um, base class and a family member subclass that um, overrides one of the uh, functions. And what we see down here, here we're seeing 
Here we're seeing these calls to EAX, so a call to a register. Oh, maybe they're trying to do some obfuscation. Um, as, as was mentioned um, earlier in the class, uh, object-oriented programming, um, it, it looks like obfuscation, but it's not. <laughs> um, this is where you actually have your, it's making reference to function tables. So your EDX, ESI, ESI is, here we go, is this offset here. Here is your class, or rather your object, or structure instance with a virtual function table. So the very first thing in here is the virtual function table. Because if we take a look at that, jump to that, here's a function, here's a function. There's only a couple of, of functions here, but if there were more member functions, more would be listed. Um, and within this, we have a, our um, member variables in here. And that's, that's basically what the virtual function table looks like. And when you have inheritance, you see these, these calls to registers. Or rather, when it's using the virtual function table, which you only get when there's inheritance. Any questions on that? I know that was pretty quick, but the, the basics of classes are they're like structures. Okay. Okay, then let me show you the wiki again. Oh, hey, look at that. 